Good morning folks, uh, welcome to my little um, video where I'm going to talk about myself and, and um, answer some of the questions that some of the viewers have been putting to me. Um, hopefully it's not going to be too long but I thought um, I might take this opportunity to um, try out the software and, and um, practice a few bits and pieces and uh, see whether this works. So I do get some questions in the comments and uh, privately by email and um, interaction with my website virtualairlinepilot.org Go and pop along there if you haven't already and uh, where I put details of upcoming videos in the following week. I also have an Instagram ac account as well where I put the same thing up there. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to answer some of those questions or just maybe the first three that I get. So first question, my career. Well, I was in aviation security for mm, getting on for 38 years. Started at Heathrow in 1978. Um, went into the been passenger terminals for the first 10, 11 years. Um, fascinating time for me and uh, many interesting stories along the way. Um, then I spent a year in the cargo examination unit, which is basically a decompression chamber that used to be situated on the south side of the airport near the quarantine centre. And they accept cargo consignments. We put them in this chamber, which is oh, 75 feet deep and has a five ton door. And we decompress the cargo to simulate a takeoff to see if there are any bombs in it. Now the chamber's massive and um, can withstand an explosion equivalent to about 10 pounds or 10 kilos of military explosive which is quite something spent a whole year there and learnt a lot fascinating job and um, unfortunately now closed down but uh, very useful at the time and El Al used to come down there every Sunday night and put a put a load into the chamber for five hours to simulate um, a flight to Tel Aviv which is about, about five hours long but that was an interesting really interesting time and from then on I went into what was then ground security unit and uh, more recently known as Airside Safety and Security. And I was a supervisor <clears throat> for many years, something like 16 years, and did a roving patrol as well as um, ran a group of a team of guards at a control post searching um, air crews, staff, VIPs, detainees, you name it, other, anything other than passengers we used to get through our control post. And of course the vehicles, contractors, um, a lot of work when the southern runway was being um, relayed. We had lots of contract work going through. Just uh, quite an interesting time. So yeah, massive career. <clears throat> had a very interesting last day when I retired in 2006. I went round and had the whole day and uh, went round the Royal Suite and met um, Anita Newcourt. Had coffee there with her. I had coffee with the airport duty manager. Uh, with the night shift going off and the one coming on. And um, I had lunch with uh, one of the senior directors, which was really nice, and they gave me a gift. So, um, yeah, massive 27-year career at Heathrow. So from 2006 to 2009, I did a few little bits and pieces. And then 2009, Gatwick came up, same job, but this time as a guard. I applied and I got in and went into what was external security. Same situation, basically searching staff, aircrew vehicles, anything other than passengers. And... Um, but this time I was a guard, not a supervisor. I had nearly 11 years at Gatwick and um, again, a marvellous career, some amazing people to work with. Still have many friends from both of them. Behind me you can see a picture of me at Gatwick and uh, one of the vehicles I drove around on patrol many times. And uh, yeah, as I said, a fantastic career. Um, loved it, both airports, something like nearly 38 years in aviation security. So um, lots of knowledge from various people, met some fantastic people. Um, including some amazing pilots, certainly at Gatwick. I have to thank um, a couple of very amazing captains for EasyJet who gave me lots of advice on how to handle the A320. And um, and that's been the mainstay in Flight Sim 2020 now while we're waiting for the 737 to come along. So that's kind of my career. And now I'm retired, trying to stay retired. And I do YouTube videos and I fly. I still enjoy flying the computer. And I'm trying, just trying to give something back to the community. Second question I get asked a lot, how many VAs are you with? Well, uh, quite a few. My main VA um, is British Airways Virtual, or BA Virtual as it's known. For some years we had a legal agreement with the real airline that allowed us to function and use their brand. Um, that ended a few years ago when they had a change of management and they asked us to shut that down, so we did and uh, basically came up with a different branding. Uh, to continue uh, as we do now but marvellous VA some amazing people been with them for over 20 years now
I was on the management team for some years. Um, we used to have the general conference meetings. I um, arranged and set up three GCMs. One in 2010 to celebrate 10 years of uh, British Airways Virtual. Uh, we basically went down to a swanky hotel near Heathrow, the Crown Plaza, and essentially borrowed it for the weekend, got discount on rooms, and something like 80 of us went down there for the weekend, had a banquet dinner, um, and I'll try and put some photographs up if I can find them. And um, I just, just had a great weekend. We also had a VIP guest. We managed to get Captain Peter Verkill, who was the commander of flight BA-038 from Beijing that lost both engines on final approach to Heathrow in January 2008. Um, thanks to the skill of him and his crew, 152 people's lives were saved. Uh, just a fantastic piece of flying. And normally when he spends, he's paid something like £2,500 or so to tell that story at certain events, corporate events, we got him for free and he told us the whole story from the horse's mouth and we paid his hotel bill, hotel bill plied him with champagne and um, gave him a good dinner for the weekend, so that was great. I did the same thing again in 2015, celebrating 15 years of British Airways Virtual. This time we went to the Marriott Hotel up in Manchester, near Manchester Airport. And um, our special guest was Captain Eric Moody, who was the commander of the BA-9747 that flew through the ash cloud, the volcanic volcano, in uh, 1982 and suffered all four engines lost and managed to land the aircraft safely. And again... Eric brought himself and his wife Pat up there for the weekend. We paid for their weekend, plied them with champagne, and he told us the story from the horse's mouth. Interesting memory from that event. We have a captain, or former captain with EasyJet, has been with us five years, who is also a member of BA Virtual and flies with us. And obviously, Eric Moody's first question to him was, you've got the real job. You've got the, the dream. So why are you doing it in the sim? Why are you playing on the simulator? And by the end of the weekend, Eric Moody understood why. And um, it was interesting to see his reaction at the beginning and then to see his opinion turned around at the end of it. But uh, two successful conferences, which I enjoyed very much. And the last time I got out with the uniform on <laughs> was in October 2019 when we went to the Plight Sim show at Cosford and I did a stand for two days talking to the public and uh, that was great fun. So yeah, I'm a member of British Airways Virtual, I'm also a member of Fly UK, I joined them a few years ago, really great bunch of people who are also at the Cosford Show, and they fly the 737 a lot on many routes that BA Virtual don't fly the 737 anymore, so that was one reason why I joined them, and um, yeah, they're, they're great, and their ACAS program is really sweet, it just sits there and records your flight and that's it, brilliant. Um, I also fly Virtual Airlines of Ukraine. I have some friends in Ukraine which I met purely by accident a couple of years ago. Obviously there's a terrible situation going on there at the moment. I haven't heard from them. I'm just hoping they're still okay. But I decided to fly for Virtual Airlines of Ukraine um, and um, I enjoy that very much. Again, they fly the 737 mostly and um, it gets me a chance to do some interesting flying in a different location. Um, I flied with TUI, TUI Virtual for a while, or flew with them I should say, um, don't fly with them anymore, I left there, um, which was cool. I also had a long time flying with Pegasus Virtual Airlines, um, another great interesting bunch of people in a different part of the world, chance to fly in different locations. Um, they seem to have let that VA go a bit now, so I've just left there. Now I have my own airline, VAP Air, which is basically Virtual Airline Pilot. Um, the aircraft you can see behind me and um, I'm just about to get the fly inside Bell 47 helicopter painted in those colours so that'll be interesting and uh, when the 737 comes along we will paint that too and uh, continue logging up some hours with them <coughs> and the other airline I fly for is Worldwide Virtual uh, one of the reasons I joined them is basically two reasons. Firstly, their ACARS is brilliant, literally just set it and forget it and records your flight. And the other thing is they have a, a whole list of uh, airlines around the world that you can fly flights for, and they can also allow you to fly custom flights. So um, yesterday, for example, I flew Air Macau from Macau to um, um, Ho Chi Minh City. That flight um, exists, but it has a different code and a different airline operates it. 
um, using a different aircraft and I wanted to fly the flight, sim the flight simulator 2020 A320 of Air Macau so I was able to log that as a custom flight so you can fly pretty much any flight um, and uh, yeah as I say it's good they're a nice bunch of people they have a vibrant forum their ACARS works wonderfully well and um, that's a really good airline to be with so at the moment I'm with four or five VAs and uh, there you go that's my virtual airline career anybody interested in looking finding out about virtual airlines and what they do and why well um, I also got a video up on my YouTube channel where which was taken by a reporter at the um, Cosford show in 2019 where I talk about why we why British Airways virtual why people fly for a BA and how much fun it can be and lastly the uniform that's the question I also get quite a lot some people like it some people think it's stupid if you those of you who know about cosplay will know that there are people who dress up in various superhuman superhero costumes and stuff like that and go to conventions so it's a well-known thing um, I'm not a pilot I have some flying experience in light aircraft over the years and I've been into the British Airways simulator many years ago and actually flown the 747 which was great and um, but I've never managed to get the dream I never managed even to get the, the, the private pilot's license because by the time the opportunity came along I was married have some children had a mortgage like most people and it was just way beyond my financial capability at 66 it would be nice to see if I could get it um, providing I could pass the medical but uh, so flight simulator gave me the airline career I always wanted and um, as time's gone on we've now got to flights in 2020 and um, you know you can fly aircraft in uh, almost study level type aircraft um, and simulate a virtual airline career and do the things the way the real guys do and uh, as I said had a lot of help from some people at EasyJet and BA and one or two guys at Virgin who I know very well um, also have been really helpful in helping me to learn to fly the airline way <coughs> as best I can so as to the uniform yeah I got the uniform together bits and pieces over over time and I wear it when we go out to um, when we went out to our conferences and when I was giving speeches and introducing guests and I wore it at the uh, Cosford show again just to highlight virtual airline and, and basically just enjoy doing something that I, I do I, mean, I don't get out all, all the time I mean you see the image of me in all of my videos but um, I have a t-shirt and um, a hoodie and that with the VIP logo on it as well so it's not just the uniform so I, I do get it out occasionally and I make no excuse it's just a bit of fun I'm not pretending to be anything I'm not um, it's always been a dream a dream that I've never aspired to and there are some people out there who have the dream who are just some fantastic people and that I've met and talked to and they've seen me in the uniform and they don't put me down and that's great and I love them for it so I hope you'll understand it's just a bit of fun for me I'm not in any way pertaining to be something I'm not it's just my virtual airline career that's what I do now I've got to edit this video and hopefully it'll all work out this is the first time I've tried doing this using a different technique to get the screen behind me and uh, so far it seems to have worked out okay um, I would be interested in your comments um, to see whether you'd like me to do something like this again and talk about something else and uh, if you've got any questions please put them in the comments I'm very happy to talk to my people I really feel like engaging with my viewers is important and I'd also take this opportunity to say thank you to the supporters I've got um, I'm up to over 300 viewers which is a milestone for me and so thank you very much to all of you thanks for spending the time and watching this video um, I hope you've learned something and hope you've enjoyed it so this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, and uh, I will see you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.